Right, hello, wine drinking people. Today is Thursday, June 4th. Man, hard to believe I've already been back from my trip to Champagne and Burgundy like two weeks. Wow, those 12 days went by far too quickly. But a great time was had, and one of the visits that we uh, went when we were out in Burgundy was we stopped at Louis Jadot. Uh, we tasted 13s and uh, some 14s out of barrel when we were in Burgundy, and I can say the last few vintages, 12, 13, and 14, all three outstanding vintages. Fairly different. The 12 vintage got a lot of structure. This is a very good vintage, uh, one that you could definitely age in the cellars for 8, 10 years for the village wines, and longer than that for the Grand Cru Burgundy. Um, it's got wines that will last for a very, very long time, especially the top-level vineyards and a vintage like 2012 that's got good structure. 2013, very charming, very forward. Uh, the wines are going to be much better to drink uh, when they're young. Well, uh, at Louis Jadot, they distem all the reds. They go into barrels for fermentation, natural yeast. They do the pillage by hand in the Grand Cru's, and they've got a lot of different size barrels all relative to the size of each partial that they ferment separately. And we got some pictures here on this email to show you. They do 40 days uh, fermentation for the Grand Cru's and uh, three weeks for the regional wines and the all stainless for the village stuff. Uh, really slow maceration here to extract more from the skins. And they've got an all gravity fed cellar, really state of the art. One of the only 360 cellars uh, that I've ever seen. And uh, they own their own cooperage since 1996. Uh, they do a lot to control every aspect of production. Well, the whites, they've got their own vinification area for them, and uh, they do vinify those with the stems. They go into large tanks, and they settle them in the barrel after fermentation. They stop the mallow in the spring, and um, these wines have got good acidity, these 2014s, 13 to 16 months in barrique, about 30% new. And uh, they do about 10 million bottles a year at Louis Jadot, and uh, Boisset and Olivia Laflave are still bigger. All the barrels are toast, medium toast, and that's kind of a recurring theme we heard in Burgundy. Uh, 2014, as I mentioned, a very small crop. And uh, Aligote, the other white wine in Burgundy, well, Pierre Henri Gagné, the president of Jadot, it's got one of the two domains in Bouzeron, along with Aubert de Villain, the owner of Domaine de Romanicanti. So we got to try their. Aligote, we had some 2014s out of Baril, Barique, the Pernod Vergeles, Clos de la Croix. And uh, this wine, one of the better values that you find in uh, Burgundy. It's located just between Alex Corton and Savigny Le Bon in the northern part of the Cote de Bon. And they produce both red and white in this region. Uh, the 2014 out of Barrel had a lovely, juicy fruitiness to it. And uh, this wine, very nice balance. And like I said, a great. Uh, value. The Savigny Le Bon Les Gruyettes. Uh, this wine is uh, the commune of Savigny Le Bon is located between Alex Corton and Pernod Vergeles. And this wine had a lovely, juicy lemon drop candy fruit. Some nice minerality, some nice southern exposures here in this vineyard. So you get both nice whites and reds. Merceau is one of the largest productions at Louis Jadot. The 2014 had a lot of juicy fruit. One of the things we love about Merceau, uh, the most California esque of all of the appellations in Burgundy for whites. Some lovely white flowers here also. These 14 showed a lovely richness of fruit. The Bone Greves, one of my favorite appellations in Burgundy. 36 Premier Cruise, but no Grand Cruise in Bone. And uh, less gravelly minerality to the wines here. That nice zesty lemon citrus and um, nice apple fruit here also. The Bone Greves, uh, really good value. This 2014 looks like a really nice version of this. The Pelini Marche Clos de la Green. Now we're talking here. Merceau, Pelini, and Chassan, the three top regions. And this is a Premier Mere crew and the uh, Duke de Magenta, um, the Clos de la Garine, a, a separate domain there. Very complex bouquet of white flowers, tree fruits, honey, uh, wonderful viscosity here. And um, 1970, they started working with this vineyard. The Chassan Montrache Morgeau, um, this is um, one of the better known Premier Crews. And uh, this wine has got a lovely, uh, it's all domain fruit, a lovely bouquet, bouquet of tree fruits, very forward wine, notes of vanilla, light spice, really pure, lovely freshness in this wine. The Corton Charlemagne, the big boy that we had out of barrel, just lovely, this wine, powerful and rich, a lovely intensity there, hints of buttered toast, uh, some bright and focused, excellent length there. And then finished from the bottle, we had some 2012, some 2011s, and uh, we had a 2007 Charm Chambertin. A Charm Chambertin 2007 was just brilliant. A bit of a bit, bit, uh, ar animal kind of barnyard note to the spice box, a potpourri of flowers, smooth and silky on the tongue with a nice earthy character. These 2007s drinking beautifully right now. Lovely spice and good freshness. Most excellent juice. If you got 2000 in your cellar, you don't have to wait a long time to drink these. 2011 starting to come around. We had a little Chambolet's Fuis 
uh, which is just left to uh, Bon Mars. This one had a lovely cherry fruit, lovely fresh flowers, really nice nuance to these 11s. They're not big wines, but like the 2007s, they've got nice freshness and balance to them, like the Gevray Chambertin, good amount of fresh earth, barnyardy notes, really round and elegant, that red berry fruit and fine silky tannins. 2011s, five years from now, are going to be perfect. You don't have to wait, like I said, like these 12s, which have got great structure, man. This Volnay Clos de la Barre Monopole was just fantastic, man. A big nose of dark plum and cherry fruit, dark spices, kind of like Christmas cake, usually more feminine, but this wine is the exception to the rule. Big and powerful wine, mouth-drying tannins, good complement of fruit and spice. This wine needs time. Just like the Pomard, a Premier Cru Clos de la Commanderie, I'm reviewing these wines backward how we actually drank them this one's got a lovely dark uh, uh, plum and really the strongest side of the Cote de Bone wine spice box floral notes smooth plush velvety texture but nice structure and depth these 2012 very powerful these wines are going to age in your cellar beautifully the bone celebration well this is a blend of eight 19 different Premier Cru sites, really pretty floral notes here. Get some nice gravelly, minerally notes to these bone wines. Good structure, a nice hand of earth and spice, really fine and elegant. And then one of the better values, this Pernand Croix de la Perrier Premier Cru. Lovely red berry fruit here, some nice leather and brown spices. Very rich and elegant, good structure. A bit tannic, but uh, like I said, give these 12s a little time. Check it out. Everything we've got from 12, and then we've got some 11 still. We've got 10s. We've even got some older vintage wines on this offering. We've got like a case of 2005 Louis St. George Premier Cru. Check it out. Everything we've got from one of our best friends in Burgundy, uh, Louis Jadot. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.